That ain't right. The large eye or element on the bottom right of this stove top is not heating. Fortunately, this is usually a fairly easy fix. Improper heating is a pretty common issue that can be caused by a variety of reasons. This eye in particular, when positioned just right, will arc. Based on the arcing, I am certain on what is causing the issue. However, I am going to show a few other things to check if you have improper heating, starting with the eye. We'll lift up on the eye and pull on out. Let's grab another so we can compare test results. The issue looks pretty obvious here. However, there is another potential issue that will require a multimeter to test. Let's see what a continuity test on a functioning eye looks like. As you can see, we get consistent continuity and around 38 to 39 ohms with the small eye. With the dirty eye, the meter is showing inconsistent continuity. Also, the large eye should read about half the ohms of a small eye. In order to accurately test the continuity, we will need to clean the dirty terminal first. There is a pretty thick layer of soot caused by the arcing from earlier. Arcing typically takes place when there is not good contact between the terminals and the receptacle block. I will be using some still wool and a little bit of soap to remove the soot. Scotch-Brite or a heavy-duty sponge could also work. If there is a break in the coil, the meter will read OL for open load and we will need to get a new eye. Fortunately, that was not the problem and after cleaning, we get a consistent continuity reading. Another quick way to check the element without a multimeter would be to put the potential bad eye where a working element is. If the eye is still not working, it is likely a break in the coil. If the element works, then it is likely the terminal block or wires that are the issue. Be sure to clean any potential dirty terminals or arcing may take place. We can also check the indicator light to troubleshoot the issue. If the light does not turn on after turning the heat dial, the control switch is likely the problem. Fortunately, that was not my issue. To troubleshoot the wires, we'll need a non-contact voltage tester. Once the dial is turned and the tester placed inside the terminal receptacle block, the tester should beep and change color to indicate electricity is flowing. If the tester fails to detect electricity, the issue may be with the wires to the terminal block. Fortunately, the wires to my stove are fine. However, since we had some arcing, I will likely need to replace the receptacle block. Before I start the repair, I'll cut the power to the stove using the breaker panel. Alternatively, I could unplug the stove. With the stove off, I'll lift up on the hood. And as you can see, the receptacle where the arcing had taken place is partially melted and ruined. A normal looking terminal block will look shiny on the inside. A dark or soot covered receptacle is a good sign that it will need to be replaced. I will be using a short wire replacement kit to make the repair. But first, I'll start by cutting the wires to the old receptacle. I cut the wire somewhat close to the terminal block to give me a little extra wire in case I need it. This receptacle has been blown out and is no longer good. So in the trash we go. This replacement receptacle should do the job. Just need to connect the wires. I'll start by stripping the wires I just cut. I like to bring the wire behind the wire cutters to see what size I need to use. 16 should work without cutting any of the wire. I'll be exposing about half an inch of wire as I intend to use splices to make the connection. I want each wire to sit about halfway in the splice. I have these old splices lying around that I want to get rid of. However, most replacement kits will have wire nuts to connect the wires. I'll just expose a little more wire coming off the receptacle block, again aiming for about half an inch of wire. Now, time to break out the crimper. Most crimping tools have two types of crimps, one for non-insulated crimps and another for insulated. I will be using the insulated crimp because I am using an insulated splice. I like to do two strong squeezes on each side of the splice. Also, I crimp the receptacle side first because it is going to be a little more difficult to crimp underneath the stovetop. This receptacle block likely failed because the adjoining element is the one most used for cooking. All things break down over time and aggressively pan punching the eye can speed up wear and tear as the terminals may not have a solid contact to the receptacle block which can cause arcing. Now I can make the crimps to the stove. Both of the lines coming out of the stove are hot so the order does not matter and they can be connected on either side. A long wire replacement kit is also an option and is typically better to use if the wires to the receptacle block are damaged. However, the process to install this kit is a little more involved as you need to pull the stove away from the wall and access the back to unhook the wires from the control switch. The splices I used also have heat shrink on the ends, which can be shrunk using a lighter. However, you must be careful not to burn the wires or splice. 
a heat gun or hair dryer could also work. The one thing I don't like about using splices is that if you have to replace the terminal block again, you will have to cut the wire, which will potentially make the wire from the stove too short to use, depending on the replacement kit. Alternatively, I could have just connected everything with a couple of wire nuts. Using a wire nut is nice because it is relatively easy to remove if you need to replace the receptacle again. Also, most replacement kits also include heat shrink. A lighter or heat gun can be used to do the shrinking. When using a lighter, just make sure to keep that flame on the move. This heat shrink can be easily cut away in the future. Just watch your fingers. Be sure to stay till the end of the video to see a couple of outtakes. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Before I button everything up, I'll test the receptacle by turning the power back on to the stove. I'll turn the corresponding dial and use a voltage tester to see if electricity is flowing. It appears everything is working, so we can reassemble everything. Also, most of these replacement kits come with a couple of different mounts. Just select the one that is closest to the existing mounts. Before we get to the bloopers, I do have to warn, intentionally arcing your stove is dangerous. Do not try this at home. I am an experienced amateur. Shit. You, just, you just hit the breaker. <laughs> you okay? You scared? Well, I mean, you just hit the breaker. What does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, that's not how you do that. You have to, you have to like move it. <laughs> <laughs> 